Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. Thanks so much for being here. Um, topics I've got on the agenda for today include several things related to releases, uh, UI improvements that are coming in the upcoming release, uh, recent UI topics, and then things that are upcoming in the next LTS baseline. So this one is important. And we got a new accessibility report in German language. Ooh. Now I'm a little, well, it's not as, as deep or as thorough as past accessibility reports that we've received, but I'm happy to show it here and talk, we can talk about it briefly. Any other topics that others want to be sure we cover in our UX SIG today? Not for me. Okay, all right, then let's, let's take a look first at, at release calendars. So we just recently released weekly 2.468. That's now the fifth, fourth or fifth, fourth release after we started requiring Java 17. Still, things are very quiet. No, no outraged complaints, no howling that, hey, you broke me because you require Java 17. We're, we're doing just fine there. 2.452.2.3, the long-term support release, last in that line released. Uh, it supports Java 11. And we're scheduled early in August to do 2.462.1 with me as the release lead. Now that one is, is looking good. 2.462 is has good feedback from users. A bunch of UI improvements. I was not planning to go through each of those, uh, but if there are any of these that where you're concerned or you'd like to see more, this is a great time to ask and say, hey, Mark, show me that one, or, or let's talk about this one. There was some controversy about this one from several users saying, hey, you made my life much worse because it requires two clicks or three clicks now instead of one, uh, but it's going to stay there. And uh, then others are, several of them are, are really about look and feel. And, and I like that. They're very nice, nice look and feel improvements. There've also been some UI fixes that are repairing things that were just not working correctly. Two or one or two of them were specific to Safari and, and good, for, good for us. And then there are three entries in the upgrade guide. The upgrade guide notes that this will be the release where we switch from commons file upload one to commons file upload two. And that means there are at least two plugins where the user must upgrade to a newer version of the plugin in order to get support for that up updated library. This commons file upload to change is part of the spring security project. And it's crucial that it happen. We're delighted that it's been done and that it's arriving in LTS. The two affected plugins, neither of them have more than 2000 installations. So they're not huge. One of the two already has a fixed release out and the other, they've acknowledged the issue and are, as far as we understand it, working on a fix. Any questions on 2.462.1? Okay, the next topic, let's look at, at the active work because this is a place where I think we should, be, we should be aware. This web UI label is a very nice way to see what's happening in Jenkins right now. And there's been work on standard dropdowns. The nice part of this is that's one more place where we can remove the use of Yahoo UI. So special thanks to Zbigniew Konechny and to Tim Jacom for their work helping us get rid of an outdated JavaScript component. Then the project relationship page, this is work that Tim Jacom started to resolve one of the places where we, the one and only remaining place where we're using a particular outdated deprecated component as well. So nice, nice improvements both. We can look at those, I think, as a good way to see what they're, what they're doing. So here, if we look at, oh, I thought Tim had given us a picture on this one, no screenshot. We'll have to look at the next one. That's this one here. And here, oh, nope, I got that standard drop downs. Shame on me, I got the wrong hyperlink in there. 
standard drop downs for combo box. Nope, nope, sorry. Standard drop downs for autocomplete. I believe you've been like, here we go, screenshots. Okay, so in the before screenshot, what we see is a different different looking box in the drop down, right? You notice that foo and free here are looking very different than the rest of the UI. Whereas with his changes, it's now looking like the, the, the standard rounded boxes on other UIs. And I believe he's also made some improvements here to widen it out right, widen it out further so that it covers the full width of the dialogue. Yeah, so any questions there in terms of this is not yet merged, notice it's still open, but um, Tim and Spinek are working on it, actively conversing back and forth. I'm not aware of any test impact for either of those because dropdowns are typically not covered in automated, automated tests. Then there's ongoing discussion about the preview link for plain text markup formatter. This was an idea offered by Jan Faracik and, and it's still being discussed. James Nord just recently gave some feedback on it. And now this one, move the executors from dashboard and nodes page to a dedicated page. This one's a rather bold change. So what we see here on the new look is rather than having the list of executors on the side panel, remove them from the side panel. Tim's observation is, hey, most users don't need to know what the executors are doing. And it wastes time and bandwidth to refresh that side panel in ways that don't, don't actually help most users. So what he's done is created a separate dedicated page to show the status of these of the executors. So here you see the built-in node is currently has one executor and is idle. We've got an agent that's offline. And down here in good, we've got the agent running four different, four different projects. So this is the same information that was visible on the side panel before that it will now be in its own page. Questions or concerns there? Uh, no concerns, just wanted to say that I'm not the targeted audience i guess because i love to see what's going on from the main page but okay that makes sense i guess for lots of other users yeah okay well so so now i'm i am interested bruno is tell me more about what are the times when you find the the side panel list of node status particularly helpful uh whenever i do a multi-branch pipeline scan mm -hmm. and that i have my agent fully loaded, even overloaded, in fact, so that everything is locked up in a way or another because I don't have enough in executors, for, for example. So uh, instead of uh, watching each, going into each project and saying, oh, uh, what's going on? Why isn't it working? Why is it blocked or something? I can see on the main page that my all my executors are busy waiting or interlocked. Uh, because I failed having a nice configuration, whatever. What I mean is that um, when I have something blowing up, uh, I would say with tons of uh, pipelines to execute at the same time, I like to see how they are distributed amongst all my agents. Okay, so and I think I I think there is still side panel content. I haven't double checked this, but I think there is side panel content about the jobs that are in the queue still. I, th I think okay. the queue will still be there, but but I'll have to double check that. That's a good question. So so I'm going to make a note here that um, uh, explore uh, further to see if the queued builds are still visible in the new layout, right? Because I think since this is only showing executor status that the queued builds will still be on the side panel. Okay, we'll see. And if ever Tim said it would be easy to extract that and make it a plugin so that I could have the same behavior than before. So I would be the one guy installing that plugin if it ever well, existed. And that's, that's good to know. That, that's very good to know. Excellent. Okay, good.
All right. Thank you. Any other comments or concerns on recent UI topics? Okay, a crucial thing that I wanted to be sure we got into this session was a review of, of several. Oh no, there it is. I think I just answered my own question, Bruno. Here it is, remove idle executors from nodes. Well, let's look at it to be sure. The rewrite yeah, of the build history widget will not come in 2.462.1 it merged into 2.463. So this will arrive 30th of October. If current schedule holds, 30 October, 2024 is the next LTS baseline release. And the, the rewritten build history widget, I've been using it for a month or so now, and I'm thoroughly pleased with it. I really am. Okay, before the layout was linear list with no no sense of grouping no sense of of hints just one after the other after the other now in the new there's a grouping by date and the layout is at least for me very pleasant i i understand it i can see it so no breakage that has been detected in any of the automated tests and no complaints from users this released in 463 and we're now at 468. So it's been in at least four weekly releases already. This one, however, may have, because, because it's a change to this component, there may be test impacts. We've not seen any in bill of materials. We've not seen any in any of the plug-in unit tests that are regularly run, but there's a risk that someone may have automated tests that depend on some layout of the build history widget. Any questions there? Um, no question, but I, I used to be um, a weekly release user. I had something up to date every week and I was quite happy with that. And then I switched to the LTS uh, because I wanted something more, more stable for the end user because I'm experimenting with other things based on the LTS. But this makes me regret not using weekly anymore. That looks well, pretty cool. <laughs> and, and you are welcome to switch back to weekly. Weekly is intended to be every bit as reliable as, as stable, but you don't have to upgrade once a week. You only have to upgrade stable once a month. So, yeah. so it's a compromise, right, between one and the other. Good. All right, the next, the next one that I wanted to be sure everyone was aware of, and again, this is not in 462.1. So this is not coming in August. It won't arrive until... October, but categorize user properties is a change that Vadek Folonia actually started and that Tim and Jan finished. And it's now been included. So the before shot looks like this, where we see, okay, here are all of the things under the user. And now after it has categorization, like we've used on on the Manage Jenkins page. And the categorization makes life easier and better for that administrator. Instead of one single monster page where they do all their changes, they can use categories and see them at the top level. So much more, much more usable, a very nice improvement by, by Vadek. And thanks to Tim for finishing it. All right. Any any questions or concerns there? Okay, great. So now, now the question we had earlier was what about idle executors? Okay, so Marcus Winter of SAP has proposed this, uh, this one. It's been merged. So Bruno, you may want to check this one. Mm -hmm. and see what what this if this plus the one that Tim's proposed now is a, a big issue for you. Okay, we'll do. So here we see, well, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, no, no. Okay, this is just idle executors. So, mm -hmm. so again, this is something different, right? Instead of showing, instead of showing, let's see if we've got an example here. Yeah, instead of, instead of showing idle executors with their own line, they're now hidden. And I've actually liked this one. I've, I've enjoyed this one as well. So having been using this one, 
this one's working for me quite well also. But Bruno, it's a good thing for you to check to see that it fits your needs. Yeah, thank you. Great. All right, now the next LTS baseline will require Java 17. Since that was already in Jenkins 2.463, that's crucial. Uh, we hope it will include Jetty 12 EE8, but no longer are we thinking this will be in July. It may be July or August when we get Jetty 12 with Jakarta EE8 instead of Jakarta EE9. Uh, any questions there? So Jetty 12 is a, is a significant upgrade from Jetty 10. We're really, really deeply grateful to Basel Crow and Adrien Le Charpentier and many others who are working on it. Then we hope that the next will include Jetty 12 EE9 and Spring Security 6. And that's because the Spring Security 6 is the replacement for Spring Security 5 that is end of life as of 31 August, 2024. All right, last topic that I had was this accessibility report. And I'd say, let's take a look at it and we'll just open it up and see. So this is a German language report from a user who is at T-Systems. Okay, and so, or a person at T-Systems. So if I download that, and let's open it up in our friendly local Excel spreadsheet. So Christina, I know you've done these, these yeah. reports before. This one does not have any screenshots. Uh, I've run through the translation of each of the fields and looked for things that I were, was of concern. My challenge is some of the descriptions are quite simple and will require much more thought before someone can say, oh, there's something we could do about that or not. Yeah, do you want to um, assign that, or is it possible to assign that to me and I can break it out into action items? Sure, sure, you bet, absolutely. If if you'd like to do that, let me, I'll just put that issue on assigned to you if you're okay with that and sure. that's easy. So Christina, There we go. All right. So assigned to you, Christina. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Any other topics for UX SIG meeting today? All right, then thanks everyone. We'll meet again in a month. Thank you very, very much.